You might have seen super keyword in Salty Smart Contract, but what it does and why we use super keyword, what are the functionality we have and what are the way we can initialize super keyword in the contract. Follow the general convention, provide the license identifier and Salty version. And now let me create the hierarchy. So super keyword will allow you to inherit the parent contract. So this is how the entire interface tree looks like so let me call this interference tree and first we have the first contract a and from this we will have this two contract b and c so b and c will inherit the a contract and then we're going to create another contract d and that d going to inherit b and c and a so it will inherit all the three contract so let me show you by the code so let's create a contract let's create a, a contract So let's declare an event and we're going to log that event into our console to see that what data we are getting. So let's declare an event log in that we're going to pass this data string the message. Now let's come down. We're going to create a function. We'll call it foo and it's going to be a public virtual and in that we're going to simply emit that event the event we have created. So in that we're going to pass this data a dot foo called. So this is the data this is the first function we have now let's create another function this will call bar and it's going to follow the same structure and in that we're going to emit this event so this will call it and now we're going to close this contract now what we're going to do we're going to create another contract by the name b and this time we're going to inherit the a contract using the s keyword so i hope you haven't forgot that why we have used s keyword because we want to inherit the above contract so let's provide the name of the contract and now what I'm going to do is let's declare a function. We're going to call the same function name foo. Here we have the foo public virtual override and here we come and here we're going to initialize the event. So you have noticed one thing that here in the B contract we haven't initialized the event because of A we are inheriting that's why we have the access of the event from the A contract. So let's initialize that event and then in, in that we're going to call this B dot foo call. And this event is coming from the contract A. So that's the things you have to keep in mind. That's the pretty simple thing. And we go to call this A.foo. So this is the one way to declare and call the contract A. Contract A function by the name itself. So you can call it A and you can call the function. So this is the one way to declare the functions. Now let's come here. Let's create another function. We're going to call it bar virtual override. Let's come here. We're going to call this emit log B dot bar called. So we're going to call this super. And this time in this function, what we have done is still we are calling the contract A, but instead of writing the A, we have used the super keyword and this super keyword will work in exact the same way. Let's close that. So this is the first contract B. It's inheriting the property of A and we have used the foo function in that we are calling the contract by the A, by the name. And then we are using the super function, super keyword in the bar function. That's clear. Now. Let's create another contract. It will call C and in that we're going to inherit the A property. Pretty simple. We have to do the same thing. Let's create a function virtual override In that we're going to call this event. Now we have the event. Let's call this function. Same logic we are following because C is also inheriting the A. And the reason why I'm giving you this multiple example because you have to understand everything that no matter what is the hierarchy, what is the tree? It's all important that how you are inheriting the contracts and what is the hierarchy of the contract? So that's what we have here. You can simply inherit that and you can simply call the other function bar and you can use this same super keyword. You can log that event and you can call the super bar and that's pretty much. So that's our C contract. Now let's come here. We're going to create another contract D and in that we're going to inherit B and C. And in this scenario, D will have the access of all three contract B, C and A because b and c is also inheriting a so in that way d will have the access of a contract so let's come here we're going to create a function called foo virtual in that we're going to pass this because we want to override the b and c contract and that we're going to pass that and here we're going to call the super dot foo and can you guess from where we are getting the super keyword i believe that you got it super keyword Let's create another function override in that we're going to say B and C and we're going to simply call the super bar. Let's close that one. So that's pretty much that's the pretty much of the contract we have created here. And here you can see I have given this logs. So right now you can see that 
it seems like complicated thing for all of you guys but don't need to worry what we're going to do is when we're going to call each of these function we have to check the logs that what exactly happening so here you can see when you will call the d this contract it will inherit the a b and c as i told you that it will inherit all the three contract and it will first call the c and then it will call the a so that's how it will be going to follow which is not that important don't need to worry about it now what we can do is now let's check this entire contract in the remix id so this is the contract we have written this is the a contract this is the b contract this is the c contract and this is the d contract so let's deploy that if we click here we have these four different contracts so let's deploy one by one first we're going to deploy the a contract click on this deploy and here we have the logs if you come here if you click on this a contract so here we have the a contract in this we have these two function foo and bar so let's click on the bar and let's try to have a look at what data we get in the console so the transaction went successful if we come here click on this and here you can see this is the log we have so this is the data we have passed in the foo function so we have called the bar okay we have called the bar so in that we have this bar called you can see this logs we got if we call this bar here you get got it you can see this is the another data we got here so this is how you can access i access the data from the blockchain with the help of the event so this is the first contract now what i'm going to do is let's deploy the other contract click on this come to the contract b and in this you will notice one thing that the contract b is inheriting the property of contract a just like this event okay so here we have to deploy the contract and here we got the contract and if we come here let's open the logs to see what data we get if we click on the bar contract so here you can see we are getting bar dot called if we open that here we have the data so here we have two events this is the bar dot call this one and then we have used this super keyword and we are getting from here so a dot bar we have used this super keyword so we can easily able to access this contract a because here we have specified that we are using the contract a in the contract b so that's also working fine let's come here let's deploy the contract c I and mean, in the c contract you can see a is the in a is inheriting the c so it will going to behave in the same way the b contract let's say check this d contract so before we do that okay let's check the c first because the d is dependent on a and c so if we come here this is the c contract and if we click on this bar here the transaction went successful you can be able to find the logs if you call the foo the transaction went successful now let's come here let's deploy this d contract if we deploy that the transaction went successful and here we is the catch so here we have given the couple of descriptions so let's do one thing let's call this foo contract first if we call the foo contract and let's try to look what data we get in the so here you can see as it mentioned that it going to call the contract c and that's what happened here b dot bar and then it will have the b dot bar so first it called the c because it will start always from the top most left hand side first it will have with c then it will go with b and that's what we have here b and then we have the c it's called all the contract if you call the foo contract it will have the same behavior so when you want to inherit any other contract you can use the super keyword or you can use a direct name and when you use the super keyword it's going to take the first contract in the con smart contract hope you have learned something new in this video if you are still in confusion and doubt do leave in the comment section i'll try to help you with that have a wonderful day